Hello, hi everyone. My name is Dr. Akash, and today we are going to learn about the concave mirrors. So first, we'll learn about the ray diagrams, and then we'll learn some applications of these concave mirrors. These are silver surface, and these are reflecting surface. So now, why the mirrors have two types of surface? Because let's suppose if the light is falling onto the mirror, we want it to reflect. If we don't put a silver, then what will happen? The light will simply pass through it. Correct? This. The reflecting surface it is a part of a hollow sphere so if you can imagine so this would be a hollow sphere you can see they all converge at a single point that point is called as principal focus so there are few terms which you should uh, remember if you have a concave mirror then this one is the silver side the point here it is called as pole now all the rays they converge so that point is called as focus and there is a c which is center of curvature these points you should remember now this axis here this is called as our principal axis so these are the four special rays or we can say that these are the rules these are the rules which you should remember so if the incident ray is parallel to the principal axis the reflected ray would be it will pass through the focus if the incident ray is passing through the focus the reflected ray would be parallel to the principal axis if the incident ray is passing through the center of curvature reflected ray will pass through the center of curvature and if the ray is directed towards the pole the reflected ray will be making an equal angle with the principal axis hello hi everyone my name is dr akash and today we are going to learn about the concave mirrors so first we'll learn about the ray diagrams and then we'll learn some applications of these concave mirrors if you are seeing me for the first time so this is about me so i have a phd in physics from national university of singapore bsms dual degree from isa pune as rank in iit advanced as well as i have uh, seven years of teaching experience so now what mirrors they are called as concave mirrors so you can see here this is called as reflecting surface and this is called as silver surface this is a silver surface and this is a reflecting surface so now why the mirrors have two types of surface because let's suppose if the light is falling onto the mirror we want it to reflect if we don't put a silver then what will happen the light will simply pass through it correct so we don't want that so we do, we want light to come back that is the reason we put a silver on the back side of the mirror right so now this reflecting surface it is a part of a hollow sphere so if you can imagine so this would be a hollow sphere correct so when we call the surface to be a concave mirror if the reflecting surface is a part of a hollow sphere and the reflecting surface is inwards if the reflecting surface is inwards that is a concave if the reflecting surface is outward it would be convex now you can see here if all the rays parallel to the principal axis fall onto the mirror you can see they all converge at a single point that point is called as principal focus so let's learn some terms regarding this so okay so there are few terms which you should uh, remember if you have a concave mirror then this one is the silver side the point here it is called as pole now all the rays they converge so that point is called as focus and there is a c which is center of curvature so what is center of curvature if you assume this to be your your sphere then there is a center of the sphere so this is your center of curvature right these points you should remember now this axis here this is called as our principal axis okay so let's learn the ray diagrams for this concave mirror so these are the four special rays or we can say that these are the rules these are the rules which you should remember once you remember these rules or once you understand how these rules follow then you can draw all the ray diagrams so let's learn that so first ray incident ray parallel to the principal axis so there is a 
ray which is parallel to the principal axis this horizontal line is the principal axis so this incident ray after reflection what happens after reflection it passes through the focus so this is your reflected ray so there is a first rule when the incident ray parallel to the principal axis fall onto the concave mirror it passes through the focus if you want to draw the ray diagram in your school exams like uh, for your grade 10 board exams you should draw these kind of uh, these kind of diagrams so here this is a center correct so if you connect these two points this point here is point of incidence so if you connect these two points this c let's suppose this point is o this c o will act like a normal and this would be your angle of incidence because the angle between the incident ray and the normal so this would be your angle of reflection angle between normal and the reflected ray they are always going to be equal so we can draw these kind of ray diagrams now let's learn the second rule a ray which is passing through the focus so can you see this is the focus here so there is an incident ray passing through the focus if it passes through the focus then what will happen the reflected ray is parallel to the principal axis again you can draw a careful ray diagram for this there is an incident ray passing through the focus this is a reflected ray this c and this point is let's suppose o this co is our normal so this angle of incidence and angle of reflection now the third rule a ray which is passing through the center of curvature so here you can see there is a center of curvature now in the previous diagrams we have learned if you join these two points this let's suppose point o and c so this co is nothing but our radius which is a normal correct so now if there is an incident ray passing through the center of curvature what will happen so this incident ray is along the normal so in that case the reflected ray will be it will retrace its own path so it is reflected backwards along the same line just that it is backwards so that is the or third rule the reflected ray will be reflected along the same line right so there is an incident ray and the reflected ray so in this case your angle of incidence is equal to angle of reflection and that is equal to zero degrees right this is a very special case in which the angle of incidence and angle of reflection are zero degrees because they are along the normal now the fourth rule fourth rule is a ray which is directed towards the pole so if there is an incident ray it is directed towards the pole so now somewhere here we have the center of curvature correct right? so this will be your angle of incidence so what will happen this is the reflected ray it will make an equal angle with respect to our principal axis this cp is the principal axis right this is our principal axis so these are the four rules which you should learn and once you learn these rules then all the ray diagrams they are very easy i'm going to show you now right you can draw these kind of ray diagrams now yeah you can match this following so if the incident ray is parallel to the principal axis the reflected ray would be it will pass through the focus if the incident ray is passing through the focus the reflected ray would be parallel to the principal axis if the incident ray is passing through the center of curvature reflected ray will pass through the center of curvature and if the ray is directed towards the pole the reflected ray will be making an equal angle with the principal axis now let's learn about the image formation by this concave mirrors so what, what do you mean by image formation it means let's suppose if you place an object in front of the concave mirror so how the image is going to form is it going to be real image is it going to be virtual image all these things we are going to learn sometimes the image can be larger it can be diminished as well right so these differences we are going to learn now now here the object is at infinity so can you tell me any example of object which is placed at infinity infinity is like a place which is very 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 far correct so let's suppose the object is something like a sun or the moon so these objects you can call them as 
object at infinity so now there is your object which is placed at infinity so these are the incident rays these incident rays they are parallel to the principal axis so after reflection what will happen again we are just following those four rules so what will happen they all converge at this point this is called as focus principal focus so we can say if let's suppose you put a screen here if you put a screen here then you will obtain the image on the screen so whenever you obtain the image on the screen that is called as real image so this is real image and it is going to be highly diminished why it is highly diminished because there is a point size image point size is very very small can you see the object for example sun or the moon these are big objects correct so compared to the size of the sun this image is very small so that is highly diminished image right and it is going to be inverted so when you put a screen here on the screen you will obtain that although the image is point size it is going to be tilted or like upside down if there is a object for example the image is going to be this this is a object and if the image is like upside down that is called as inverted okay so that is the meaning of real and inverted image now what we do is we bring the object closer closer and closer to the mirror so now there is a object which is placed beyond the center of curvature so can you tell me any example of object which is beyond center of curvature so this is nothing but let's suppose there is a mountain or the tree nearby right so these are the objects which you call them as a beyond center of curvature so now for this object you need minimum two rays to draw the complete ray diagram first ray which is parallel to the principal axis after reflection it will pass through the focus second ray passing through the center of curvature it will retrace backwards and there is a point where these two rays they are going to meet now they are actually going to meet the reflected rays there is a first reflected ray and the second reflected ray so there is a point where these two rays meet so that is where our image is going to form so that is the image now compared to the size of the object this this looks like a diminished image right so what are the nature of the image it is formed between c and f this is a c and this f it is diminished real and inverted so there is a diminished image real and inverted then you bring the object even closer now the object is placed at the center of curvature so you can draw these ray diagrams the first incident ray parallel to the principal axis this is a reflected ray passing through the focus second incident ray passing through the focus and there is a reflected ray now these rays they meet at this point what is this point again there is a center of curvature so there is a only point on the like along the like in front of the concave mirror if you place an object at the center of curvature the image will also form at the center of curvature and there is a only point where the size of the object and size of the image they are going to be exactly the same right so image is formed at the center of curvature same size as the object and also real and inverted so these are the properties of this image now you bring in the object even closer so object is between f and center of curvature so you can draw the ray diagrams first incident ray parallel to the principal axis reflected ray passing through the focus second incident ray passing through the focus and the reflected ray parallel to the principal axis now they are going to form image at this point what is this point this point is called as beyond center of curvature so what are the properties image form beyond center of curvature it is enlarged real and inverted so this image is forming beyond the center of curvature it is enlarged you can see the object compared to the object image is larger it is becoming larger that is meaning of enlarged image and again real and inverted now the we had discussed between c and f now the object is even closer 
object is at the principal focus. So this is the last point at which we are going to form the real image. You can see now the incident ray and the reflected ray. Second incident ray. Now this is coming from the center of curvature. So it will retrace back towards the center of curvature. And these rays, these two reflected rays, they are parallel to each other. So if these two reflected rays, they are parallel to each other, they are never going to meet. Right? Or in that case, we can say they are going to meet at infinity, like very, very far. Infinity is like some place which is very far. So you can write the nature of this image. Image formed at infinity, highly enlarged, real and inverted. So these are the properties of this. Image will form somewhere here, which is at infinity. Correct? It is going to be highly enlarged. You can see the object. Compared to the object, this image is highly enlarged. It is real and inverted. Now, if you bring the object even closer to the mirror, then what will happen? We can see with the ray diagrams, first ray parallel to the principal axis, passing through the focus. Second ray, it is coming from the center of curvature. It will go back to the center of curvature. Now, these two rays, they are going away from each other. Going away from each other, that is called as diverging. So the, uh, the reflected rays, they are diverging. So you can retrace them backwards. This is this side is called as behind the mirror. Behind the mirror, right? This side is in front. So now there is a point where these two rays they appear to meet. They are not meeting like physically. They appear to meet. I am like you are able to see me. Am I really in front of you? No. You are seeing me on your computer or mobile screen. Correct? So that is a virtual. I am appearing in front of you. So here, this is also appear behind the mirror. You are like these rays, they are not actually meeting. But they appear to meet behind the mirror. So that is the image. For this object, there is an image. Now, what are the properties of this image? So, the properties is, it is formed behind the mirror, enlarged, virtual and erect. So, these are the properties of this image. Right? So, there is a only case in which we get a virtual image. In all the other cases, we are getting real and inverted. So, now there is virtual and erect. Erect means, if there is an object pointing up, the image is also pointing upwards. So that is upright. Erect also means, erect also means it is upright. Inverted is like upside down. So there is the only case in which we get virtual and erect image. So there is a summary of all the ray diagrams. So if you place an object at infinity, image would be at focus. There is a highly diminished image, right? Or point size, you can say. It is real and inverted. All these, they are real and inverted. Now, when you bring the object closer and closer, so what will happen? The image becomes away, image goes away from the mirror, right? So it is until at this point, when the object is at focus, image will be at infinity. Now the image is very, very far. But if you bring the object even closer between pole and the focus, then you will get an image behind the mirror. So when you bring the object like between pole and focus, so image would be behind the mirror, this is enlarged and this is the only case we will get a virtual and erect image. So for these ray diagrams, let's understand what are the uses, like where do we use these concave mirrors. So these are some of the applications or the uses of concave mirrors. Now the first one, a light source placed at focus. So this is a focus, you place a light source. So there is a light source, It there is a light falling onto the mirror, very small light source for and the light is falling onto the mirror. So what happens because this, this you can consider this to be your object. So all the incident rays they are coming from the focus. So these are the incident rays coming from the focus. So after they fall onto the mirror, you will get a, these are the reflected rays. So these reflected rays. They are 
parallel to the principal axis. So where can we use this property of this concave mirrors? So it is used in a torch light or search light or even the headlights of your vehicles. They have these kind of mirrors, concave mirrors and there is a small lamp which is placed at the focus. So to get a, to get a very long beam of light, correct? So there is a one application. Now, if you place the object between fo focus and pole, so we know the image is going to be enlarged. It is virtual and erect. So there is an incident ray, reflected ray, another incident ray passing, like coming from the center of curvature, reflected ray. And we all know it is going to form the virtual image. So there is a image. What are the properties? It is enlarged, erect image. And it is virtual. So now this property is used by dentist and in the shaving mirrors. So dentist use it to get a larger image of the teeth. You can see the teeth teeth are very small, but if you put a concave mirror, you will get an enlarged image of the teeth. And this image is very helpful for the dentist to identify the cavities in your teeth. Right? It is also used for in the shaving mirrors so that you can shave properly so there won't be any damages or cuts to the skin so these are the applications of concave mirrors let's understand some other applications let's suppose our object is placed at infinity so the if you place the object at infinity what will happen these are the incident rays falling onto the mirror and they get focused at the at this principal focus. So now you can use this property. Where can you use this property? Do you know which object is at infinity? An object which is you can see daily when you wake up, after you wake up. So that is our sun and the sunlight. Sunlight are the rays which are parallel to the principal axis or parallel to each other you can see. Right? So these rays, these are all incident rays. When they fall onto the concave mirror, what can happen? So they will get reflected back. All these rays, they will get reflected back. And you can concentrate all the rays to a single point. So you can concentrate all the sunlight at this point. So here, there is a like we use that heat energy so this light or this radiations they have the heat energy right when you concentrate that heat so that is used to boil the water so there is a water tank very small water tank so from this water we produce a steam and that steam is used to convert into electricity right so that is the energy conversion so this is also called as solar furnace so in the solar furnace, we concentrate the sunlight to form the electricity. So there is another way of generation of electricity using the concave mirror. So these are some of the applications of concave mirrors. So thank you so much everyone. You can join our telegram channel. You will get all the tips, tricks, lot of questions, daily quiz and assignments PDF in our telegram channel. So that's it for today. Thank you so much, everyone. Bye-bye.